Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another restful episode of True Scary Stories to Help You Fall Asleep. Today, we're going to be reading True Scary Backwoods Horror Stories. I hope you enjoy them. I also want to thank Booze and Booze for reading the first story in this video. The link to his channel is in the description down below. Make sure to go check him out and give him a subscription. He does some really good work over there. So, without further ado, lay back, relax, and enjoy these true scary stories. Hey everyone, I hope this post is appropriate for this sub. Last summer, I quit my job as a professor, and we rented out our home, and then used that income to move into the woods of Southern Oregon in our fifth wheel. My husband has a good job, and I freelance. One of the ways I contribute to the household is working as a camp host three days out of the week, inside the RV park that we live in, in exchange for free rent and utilities. I usually just make reservations, but it means I get to spend some time outside talking to others. There have been a few spooky events happened that I wanted to share. I don't see many RV park stories here, so I was hoping others would have stories to share as well. The first one. Mysterious flute playing. Our park is in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the woods. A small hill towers over us on one side, and a river is on the other. At least three times a week we hear what sounds like a flute or a recorder playing for over an hour or so at a time. Sometimes it comes from deep in the woods, sometimes from the river. I brought it up to a resident who's been here since 04. She strongly advised me to ignore it and to not mention it again. The second is scraping sounds at night. I posted this on another sub and it was removed because the mods believed it to be fiction, but it's not. About once a week, I hear a scraping sound dragging along the ground throughout the park and towards the deep woods. My husband has heard it, but no one else. Interestingly, the park ring alerts me that someone is standing in front of the office when I hear this sound, but the camera doesn't pick anyone up. Because I hate the ring going off when cars drive by, I have it set to where someone needs to be standing on the office porch in order to generate an alarm. The third, this late night caller. We regularly get calls after dark asking us for a space for the night at the last minute. I take their credit card over the phone, use a map to direct them to a space without leaving my trailer. The park owner, Debbie, explained that she didn't want me having to help any late arrivals after dark. In fact, she makes it a strict rule that we're not allowed to answer the phone at all between midnight and 6 a.m. Discussing this rule with Pat, she said something about how careful camp host needs to be about who they invite into the campground. Other random things. I'm in charge of selecting long-term residents if we have any open spaces. I review criteria, such as applicants' job size and the age of the rig, etc. While children are welcome to visit the park for short stays, no one with kids is allowed to move in on a monthly or yearly basis. Debbie really hasn't ever given me a real reason for this. The park itself was built by a woodcarver. There are massive and strange-looking totems, sculptures, and carved doors all over the property. With all this being said, our park is a slice of heaven. I love taking my dogs to swim in the river, watching wild mushrooms grow, listening to the sound of the rain with just a thin roof between us. Also, I feel very safe here. I'm becoming more open to the idea that the woods can just be weird in some ways that I don't always get. I'd love to know your thoughts about any of these or hear your own RV park stories. Hello. To start this story, I want to say that I have not seen anything like this in my life. At the time, I was 15 years old, pet sitting a friend of mine's dogs. While they were out of town in Benson, Arizona is where this took place. This property had a lot of acres, 
and it took about 15 minutes to get to their little house right in the middle of the property, about 75 acres. At the time, it was about, I want to say 10 p.m. My friend had eight dogs, and they usually stayed outside for the most part because they were big watchdogs who seemed to have been able to defend themselves in the past. Before everything happened, I was inside of their tiny home, making food, and when I heard their biggest dog start squealing kind of quietly, very scared and in pain, but loud enough for me to hear, I knew the sounds were unusual that this dog was making. I shot up and ran outside to see what was going on. I thought maybe the dog might have hurt himself or something similar, but this was not the case, and I ended up seeing a five to six foot tall, pale, very skinny creature hunched over this dog, sucking on its head. I was very stunned, almost too stunned to speak, but I managed to shake that feeling off. I start yelling at this thing because the dog started yelping loud, and I'm telling the creature to get out of here and trying to scare it, and I run over to her dog as fast as I could because I've heard of these things before, perhaps a chupacabra, and I know that they would likely eat a dog if I didn't do something. But I stop about 10 feet in front of it to see this creature jump up and run as fast as it can away. I couldn't help but keep looking over my shoulder the rest of the time that I was there. I also didn't let those dogs out at night, and I didn't care to go out there either. So when my friends came back, I told everyone what happened and what I saw. It felt like everyone was just as frightened as I was and made me even more unsettled. I ended up leaving that desert and did not look back. I still don't know what to make about it to this day, except that I know that it was something. I was talking with my stepmom about late night driving experiences, and she told me about an encounter that she had in Leroy, Montana, on a road trip from Washington to North Dakota. She was on Route 87 and she was running low on gas. The Fort Benton exit had a lot of construction going on, and she couldn't see any way to get the gas stations from the exit ramp, so she got back on the highway. After a while, she saw an exit sign for Leroy, Montana and it said that there was gas and food available. She took the exit and saw another sign reading Leroy five miles. At this point, they had no service and were relying solely on an atlas. The road took them through a dark wooded forest, and after a while, my stepmom realized that the odometer had gone up 15 miles, and they still hadn't found any sign of a town. But she kept driving and waiting for a friend, who was holding the atlas, to say something. After a few more minutes, her friend spoke up and said that she thinks that they passed Leroy somehow, and my stepmom agreed. They found a fat shoulder to turn around, and as they were pulling off to make their turnaround, they both had an image flash into their heads. A man standing in the middle of the road. Neither of them actually saw him in real life, but both could describe the man in exact detail. He was tall, with a brown flannel, and what looked to be a scythe, broken in half, with the handle wrapped in a white bloody cloth. He also had a thick scar across his forearm. While that by itself is weird enough that my stepmom planned never to go anywhere near that place again, for the next eight months she received frequent phone calls from Leroy, Montana. After my own research, I've come to find out that Leroy is a ghost town unmarked on Google Maps unless you specifically search it up. Me and some friends have already planned to go to Leroy over spring break this year and see if we can find anything. I'm posting this here to see if anybody else might have seen or heard of anything similar in the area, or any insight as to what might have happened. I was homeless for a few years from 18 to 21, and I used to stay in a tent with my ex. I always had to end up moving my tent spot eventually because the cops would find us. Either way, 
I had spent a lot of the time in the woods at night. One night when walking back to my tent, I heard something down the trail a bit. I shined my light in the direction of the sound to be met with glowing eyes reflecting my flashlight. However, where the eyes were made, it was so whatever I was looking at was taller than me, and I'm five foot eight. There is no animal that tall in my area. I turn to my ex and tell him to start going to the tent faster. He could tell something was off, so he asked if I was all right. I told him that I'll tell him when we get back to the tent, because I've always been told not to acknowledge such creatures or spirits, as it gives them more power. Then some nights there would be smacking on our tent. It would hit all sides of the tent. We would look out the tent windows and check outside the tent, but we would never find anything or hear any footsteps. Another night during the summer, we had decided to go for a small hike at night because it was way more of a tolerable temperature. About 15 minutes into the hike, I had started feeling paranoid, like I was being watched. About five minutes later, I heard a maniacal laugh coming from somewhere in the woods. I couldn't pinpoint which direction though. My ex asked what was that, and I loudly said, I don't know, but whatever it is needs to stop. As soon as I said this, multiple maniacal laughs now started. My ex and I turned around and walked back for what felt like the longest 20 minutes. Another time, I found a severed coyote head with something hung in the tree beside it that had a tooth in it. And lastly, one time, I was with my friend parked on the road far into the woods so we could smoke. The passenger window was down, which is where I was setting. The woods were right next to me. Again, the feeling of being watched overwhelmed me. Two minutes or so later, I hear a hello. And then, John, coming from the woods. I tell my friend to turn around, and we need to leave. I didn't tell her why, because like I said, I don't like to acknowledge these things until I'm far away from them. That's all that immediately comes to the mind at the moment. Thank you for reading. So the other night, on a mountain trail that I've gone to for years to watch the sunset, I felt like some guy was tracking me back to my car. The first time in my entire life of hiking alone, and I've done some sketchy stuff alone at dusk, that I felt uneasy. So the mountain trail I go to is huge with many different side trails on it. But there is one main trail that goes straight up and down the center of the mountain, which is usually pretty quick to get up to watch the sunset. I've done it hundreds of times at this point, for years now. I've watched the sunset and walked back to my car in pitch black many times. Never felt uneasy the way that I did that night. I get to the peak, walk back down a little bit to my usual viewing spot of the sunset, and suddenly some guy, also alone, comes off one of the side trails. I think nothing of it. Exchange a few words from a distance. Guy gets on his way, and I can see him even as a small dot as he gets down to the bottom of the trail. But I'm thinking, well, there's only one way out of here and he knows that I'm still up here. So I knew that I wasn't sticking around for it to get dark dark. The minute the sun goes behind the mountain, I start my way back down. As you get closer to the bottom of the trail, there's a section that narrows and is nothing but woods and trees on each side before it opens up again to a huge open dirt trail than the parking lot. Heads on a swivel the entire way back down. I get to the creepy dark narrow part just before the open trail to the parking lot and I hear someone making a noise. Like a weird noise that someone would make just to themselves but loud enough as if they wanted me to hear it. But I see no one and keep going. I get about halfway out of the open dirt road almost to the parking lot and I turn around and someone is decently far behind me out of nowhere. I don't look back again. I pick up the pace, get to my car, and book it. There was only one truck left in the parking lot by the time I got back, 
and it was on, and someone was definitely in the driver's seat. Call me paranoid, but again, I have never felt uneasy or like someone was following me like that ever in my entire life, and I've done about 80% of my hiking completely alone and a lot at night, like deep woods type stuff on sunset and dusk, and never been scared like that before. My three-year-old son suffered from chronic ear infections last year, which led to him having high fevers. I slept with him on this particular night because I needed to give him Tylenol throughout the night to keep his fever down and to keep him comfortable. I set my alarm to wake me up at around 2.30 a.m. When I woke up, I went into the kitchen to get the Tylenol. I noticed a bright light shining into the apartment from our deck door which also illuminated part of the woods behind the apartment. When I went over to see what it was, it turned out to be a car with those bright LED headlights in the parking lot to the far back right of the apartment. I figured they were dropping someone off. I saw movement of what resembled a dog walking near around near the woods. I started to think that the lady who usually walks her dog, a cute little corgi, in that area purposefully faced her car in that direction so that she could see while she walked her dog. As it got closer, I realized that there was nobody out there walking a dog, and there was no dog. I don't know what it was that I saw, but I'll describe it in the best way that I can. At first, it looked just like a dog, corgi-sized, but as it walked closer, it looked like your average house cat. Then it looked like a black bear, and then it looked like a koala. I live in North New Jersey, farmland and lots of woods, and there are no wild koalas here. At this point, my heart is pounding out of my chest and I'm scared. The fear I felt was like a primal type of fear that I've never felt before. I ran to my bedroom to wake up my boyfriend and I shook him awake very roughly. I said, you gotta come see this. He was a bit annoyed with me. When we look outside together, we see this thing getting closer, and it looks like a skunk now. White stripe down the center with the perky, fluffy tail. I said, oh, it's just a skunk, with a little chuckle. I felt a bit embarrassed that I woke him up over a skunk, but at that moment, I also felt relieved. However, I was mistaken. As it walked, it looked as if it was struggling to find a form. I thought it looked like it was falling apart, but also coming back together again at the same time. I know this doesn't make much sense, but it's hard to find the words for what we saw. After the skunk formation, it looked almost like a person crawling on the ground, with some type of fur or skin attached to them around the leg. Then it changed again, and looked like a raccoon, a groundhog, a black bear, a cat, a koala, a deer, and a skunk. The part that stuck out to me the most was that whatever it seemed to be coming apart or shedding, but at the same time it was growing. Whatever had their headlights on turned them off as soon as it went deeper into the woods. This happened pretty quick. I'd say it was only about a couple of minutes from start to finish. He ended up going back to bed but I couldn't sleep after that, so I grabbed a flashlight and shined it into the woods to see if I could see it again, but it was gone. I also opened the door to see if I could hear anything, but I couldn't. It was very quiet. I had a very hard time going back to sleep that night. My boyfriend wasn't scared, but he was confused and stunned. He didn't know what to make of it. I was scared and creeped out. I know that if I hadn't woken him up to see it for himself, he most likely wouldn't have believed me and would have chalked it up to me being groggy from just waking up or it just being an animal. Unfortunately, I know what I saw and I'll never forget it.
I grew up in Belgium, Europe. Since I was young, I've been with my friends in the Scouts. It is mixed in Belgium. We don't have boys and girls separate usually. We start Scouts when we're six years old, and then we go through all the groups until we're 18. That is when we become Scouts leaders. I'm saying this to give you a little background on me and my friends. We are people who I would consider very close with nature, camping and overall used to a lot. I would not say that we are your typical rough outdoors lumber type of people, but we can manage ourselves well through a forest. Back when we were around 16 years old, one of my friends invited our group to go wild camping in the forest that we have close to our homes. It's not your average American national park. I wish it was, with stories of Bigfoot or worse. But it definitely has its own charm and legends. We got a centuries-old tale about werewolves in our forest, and a couple of legends about witches. It's not a huge forest, but one can easily get lost if they're not familiar with its trails, and all the trees look the same. This being said to describe it the best I can, we were very familiar with the forest since we were small children playing in the tree line, and afterwards as teenagers being blindly dropped with nothing but a map in the middle of it by our leaders. I do not know whether this game is popular in other countries in the Scouts, but in Belgium, it's very well known and quite safe actually. We don't have bears or, until a year back, wolves. And when dropped, we would carry lights, so just in case anyone didn't manage his way or in or out, they would get spotted easily by a searching party. Again, this is not a national park, so it's not as big as a person could go missing for days. That being said, again, we were very familiar with the forest, and we were all locals from the village nearby. So we started our camping journey with our bikes from the village to the entrance of the forest. And once there, we would continue to go deeper and deeper into parts of the forest on foot. Since it was an area with lots of hills and few trails for bikes, the mood was good. It was beautiful, although a bit cold. Autumn evening with a few clouds and a beautiful sunset. We hiked our way through the forest until we got to a small clearing with some grass and prepared our tents for the night. We made a small campfire. We always learned to be safe, never putting in danger the forest. And we ate some beans and sausages for dinner, together with some tasty Belgian beers. At around 11 p.m., we decided to call it a night, and we each went to sleep in our tents and sleeping bags. Everything seemed like a normal camping day in our forest. Then, suddenly, at around 1.30 a.m., we woke up to the sound of what seemed to be like drums. A couple of us got out of our tents with our flashlights, asking what was going on. Our forest had always been quiet at that place at night, and during the day, the only noise you could hear were the critters, so you can imagine the surprise of hearing drums in the middle of the night. We were located on a flat area of the side of a hill to have a beautiful view in the morning, and at the other side of the hill over the top, we saw light and smoke of what seemed to be a bonfire. We figured that had to be the place where the drum noise was coming from. So the ones who had gotten out of our tents decided to just go over there to see what was going on, and maybe to talk with the people who decided that it was a good plan to be making noise in a calm forest at 1.30 a.m. We hiked over the hill so that we could have a glance at the people to know that who we were dealing with first. We walked about 15 minutes before we could actually see the bonfire. It was located in a small circled clearing with lots of trees and bushes around. We crouched towards the bushes in the tree line to get a good look of what was going on. And that is when we saw the people with the drums. A couple of them. I recall a group of five or six sat around the fire playing the same tune on the drums the whole time and another group of people was dancing around the bonfire. Although I say dancing right now, I mean people making weird, unnatural movements, almost as if they were having spasms, 
and honestly, the best way to describe it is bodies contorting. The people dancing around the circle were wearing suits. At first glance, it would make it look like people dressing to be with one with nature. A second glance would make it look like pagan suits, almost like the original celebrations of Halloween. This was when we realized that whatever these people were doing, whether it was some sort of gag or seriously some sort of ritual, we would be better off if we did not confront them. So we decided to back off and go to our camping spot as quiet as possible. Once there, we decided to wake the rest and tell them what we had seen. We packed up the same moment and left to the entrance of the forest, got on our bikes, and we all went back home. We have since still frequented the forest, both for scouts and in our free time with friends and family, and we have never seen this circle of people again. However, it has stuck with me ever since, and I will never forget how we felt out of our place in the forest for the first time in our lives. It is the first, and luckily the last time, that we did not feel welcome in our own forest. Okay, so this happened when I was around 14 or so. So around 1999 or 2000-ish. And I lived in southwest Georgia at the time, outside of the small town of Moultrie. I was at my buddy's house for the weekend. We'll call him Joe. So some random other teens that were a little older than us show up at Joe's house, allegedly running from the cops after they stole a parent's car and wrecked it in a ditch. They came up to us on foot, so the story might be true. I'm not sure. They wanted to go camp out in the woods to evade pursuit, so Joe and I say screw it and go with them. We borrowed Joe's dad's tent and started walking off into the fields and woods. Given this area is not super isolated, but there was a wilderness to the air that I cannot describe. We go maybe a mile or two back, and set up camp 50 yards away from the turnaround slash end of the dirt road. There was five of us guys, including me and Joe, and I only remember one other dude's name. Let's call him Mike. The names don't really matter, but I'm just adding any detail that I can recall. Anyway, we mess around in the woods for a while. We started a fire and ate some snacks. We didn't have any drugs except for a bottle of booze, small enough that not any one of us could get drunk off of it, but we share sips anyway. Night comes around, and we've got this six-person tent for us. I can't say if I ever fell asleep or not, but I laid down with everyone and it got late. I'm not sure what time exactly it was, but likely late night or early in the morning. I begin to hear footsteps in the woods some ways out. I hear this walking in the woods. At first, I'm like, it's an armadillo. If you aren't aware, they can sound exactly like a person while foraging for food. But no, the steps are approaching our camp directly. So at this point, I'm like, what the heck? And without moving because I'm terrified, I look around to see if the other dudes got up and I missed it. No. Five dudes in the tent. My blood freezes, and there's no sound outside except this thing walking, and it's now right outside our camp. As I attempt to breathe without making a sound, either a very pointed finger or a knife slowly starts from one point on the tent outside and drags very slowly across to the other side. So, I promptly crap myself and hold my breath. The walking sounds stop about three feet on the other side of our tent, and they never start again. Daylight slowly fades in. The steps never returned. I have this dazed feeling as if I've been up all night, as sunrise happens. One of the guys gets up, and slowly others do too. So I get up. No one is talking. No one is talking, but everyone looks exhausted. 
Eventually, one of us asked the others, Did you hear that last night? Apparently, four of the five guys were all awake during the invisible stalker. And we're all like, what the heck? The three guys who were running from the cops allegedly say that they wanted to call a friend to pick them up and go score some pot. They leave Joe and I at the camp to guard their stuff. Hooray. Now I'm paranoid at this point because I think there's some guy out there waiting to gut us. But I only have a small pocket knife on me. I take it out as they walk down the road to call for a ride. Joe and I are sitting on this discarded door that someone ditched on the edge of this dirt road turnaround like a pair of jerks when we start hearing the walking sounds again. But across the road on the other side in the woods this time, we see no one and nothing there. But it's daylight now, so I'm like, meh, it's an animal. The dirt road goes off and curves to our left and sounds approach that slowly, but the same pace as before. The sounds stop. We're looking at the road. Absolutely nothing there, and the sounds pick back up on the other side of the road. Now I'm scared. I notice Joe has his head buried in his knees, like an ostrich burying his head in the sand. And since I'm scared for the second time in the past 12 hours... I also put my head in my lap. I also place the pocket knife in open and hold it closely. The steps are now slowly circling me and Joe to say that they went kind of behind us at that same slow pace. They get directly behind me, but maybe 30 feet away. They slowly walk up to my back, my spine tingling more and more the entire time. I'm pouring sweat. And as they approach directly behind me, I jump up and swing this little baby pocket knife around like I know what I'm doing. Time slowed down during this little bit as I'm swinging the knife at a puff of air. The car with our other three guys is coming around the corner of the dirt road to pick us up. Joe and I run to the car and jump in. The three dudes ditch everything that we had at camp. No one asks Joe and I what was wrong but I could tell that they were looking at us and knew something else happened. Joe and I never said a word about it. My husband and I were hiking to a small lake off of a lodge road in Colorado. It was a very short out and back, about four miles total, and we were the only car in the small dirt lot at the trailhead. The trail followed an old mining road and had a steep incline on one side and a granite ridge on the other. We both felt very off, but foolishly kept on hiking, eager to see a remote lake. At one point, my husband saw a shovel leaning against a tree on the granite ridge, but chose not to tell me. Before the lake, the trail narrowed and led us through a thicket with the lake on the other side. Right before the thicket, we stopped in shock. The trail was completely torn up, and there were man-dug holes. They were large holes and about one to two feet deep. We should have turned around immediately, but again wanted to see the lake on the other side of the thicket. So we walked around the holes, got to the lake, and paused to take a few pictures. We weren't going to bother relaxing at the lake because we were both very unsettled by the holes. As we turned around to leave and head back through the thicket, we both stopped and looked at each other. The look we exchanged confirmed that we both smelled it. Cinnamon gum, strong enough that the person chewing it had to be close. There was a little wind, and turning around after the lake must have blown the smell our way. We silently walked back through the thicket, and back over the holes in the trail that now seemed much more ominous. The hike back was a terrifying two miles. My husband, who is six foot three, pulled out his foraging knife, and I did too. I also pulled out my bear spray. I keep it around for people more than bears when hiking alone. We both assumed our tires would be slashed when we got back to the parking lot, but thankfully they were not. Once we were safely away from the trailhead, 
My husband told me that he thought he saw someone tracking us from the granite ridge line on our way back. The lesson, if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't, and you should leave. Back when I was younger, I did some survey work for a logging company in Alaska, and I was fit and liked to hike. They sent me in first to check out the terrain and figure out the best ways into the area that they wanted to harvest. I always traveled light, just a backpack with a U.S. Army mess kit, some MREs, a few spare clothes, a fire kit, a bivouac sack, an axe, a knife some bear spray, and my late granddad's revolver. I also used to cut me a nice thick hiking stick. With all that gear packed, I set out on foot. The first night was largely very quiet, and I got a good night's sleep. Only one time I woke up to what I thought was the wind rustling through the forest, and I didn't think much of it. The next day I arrived at the designated logging area and started to do my work. Around noon, I started to get that eerie feeling of being watched. I had had this feeling before, but I always blamed my imagination for it. Well, it grew more and more over the day. Right when I was about to set up camp for the night, I heard some rustling in the brush again and caught a glimpse of something big huddling out of sight. Needless to say, I skipped setting up the camp and booked it out of there. I walked about 10 miles until I was too tired to move on. The feeling of being watched had stopped, and I deemed it safe to set up my camp. I woke up in the morning, and the first thing I saw were bear tracks of what I think was a huge grizzly going all over my campsite. I've never broke up the camp this fast again. I made sure that my revolver was loaded and within arm's reach at all times, and I kept my bear spray at the ready on my way back. But nothing happened anymore. I told the logging company about my encounter, and they said that they will take the necessary precautions. A few months later, when the logging operation was in full swing, a worker was attacked by what was later described as a huge male grizzly bear. A year or so later, hunters in that area shot one of the biggest grizzlies I have ever seen, and judging by the size of its paws, it could have been that very bear stalking me on that hike. I shared this story on another subreddit a little while ago, so I'm just pasting it here. It wasn't unsettling to me during the experience, but thinking back on it, it is very weird. My mom and I were visiting family and staying in a cabin at my uncle's ranch. There's a main house, a bunch of animal pens and fields, a dog kennel, and then the guest cabin across the lot from the main house. There are other homes nearby, so it wasn't super remote, but we were surrounded by forest, mountains, and fields. So, middle of the night, my mom and I are sleeping, and we both wake up because there's suddenly a really strong, weird smell permeating the cabin. We commented that it must be a skunk. Also, both of our dogs sat up and got restless, but didn't bark or make any noise. I was having trouble getting back to sleep with the smell and getting the dogs to lay down again, so I went outside to have a cigarette. It was nearly pitch black out, but I could see my immediate area from a dim porch light. I was leaning against my car, and I started to hear someone walking across the gravel. From the sound, I presumed that the footsteps originated from the forest area behind the barn, then walked through the gravel parking lot and turned towards the cabin. I thought it was weird that whoever it was seemed to have passed by the kennel, and the dogs weren't making any noise. None of the animals were. But I figured it had to be my uncle or one of my cousins out doing something. I was curious what they were doing out so late at night. I was tracking where the footsteps were from the sound as they were getting closer 
and just waiting for someone to walk near enough that I would see who they were. I almost called out but decided to wait. Eventually, I saw what appeared to be someone wearing a hairy, brown coat walking toward the field next to me. So this is where it got weird. It was getting closer and about to walk by me, parallel by about 6 to 10 feet. It was close enough that I realized that what I thought was a person in a hairy brown coat was actually the bottom half of a large creature on two legs. The bottom half, two legs and hindquarters, were about the size of an average adult and appeared brown. The top half that could only barely make out in a silhouette appeared black. I couldn't tell how tall it was in the dark. It just walked by and into the field that was next to the cabin. The gate was not open. I checked the next morning. So it would have to have stepped over it to get into the field. I kind of registered what I saw. Thought that I should probably be freaking out. But I just went back inside and back to bed. I did a little walk around the property the next day to make sure that all the animals were there and unharmed. But I only told my mom about the experience. We ended up coming back the next month, and she told my aunt and uncle about it then. I fully expected them to make fun of me for talking about Bigfoot, but my aunt asked for some clarification and said that her sister had told them about seeing something similar. Back in the 80s, I was camping with some high school friends deep in the forest, about 10 miles down this old logging road. We were far away from anyone and anything, and drinking around a campfire. We were just fooling around, when suddenly we heard a massive, loud, and deep roar from the forest. It stopped all the fun dead in its tracks. We didn't want to drive because we'd been drinking. So we put the fire out and spent an uncomfortable and sleepless night in our cars. Back then, there weren't supposed to be any bears around here, though I had seen one on the other side of the country a few years before, but I've never heard a bear make a noise like that. You could tell by the echo that it wasn't very close, but it was so loud that it sounded close. It wasn't anything like the typical roar of a bear, more like a high-pitched scream or howl with a huge bass rumble underneath it. The echo seemed to last forever. It only happened once. I know we didn't drunkenly imagine or exaggerate it, because we had a boombox and were recording us telling each other jokes. The roar was so loud that it distorted the microphone on the boombox. A while back, I ran into the guy who owned the tape. We were both still mystified about what that could have been. And sadly, his basement flooded years ago, and the cassette was ruined. A few years ago, my husband and I decided to go camping at a campsite in the Ozarks that was a private camping area near a couple of cabins that you could rent and someone with a permanent on-home site. I've always had creepy experiences in the woods and rarely sleep, so I foolishly thought that I'd sleep better near other humans. I also decided to take an edible that night to help me sleep, but I ended up staying awake with anxiety instead. My husband is a sound sleeper. Meanwhile, I hear every sound. It was probably about 2 a.m., and my husband is sound asleep, sawing logs when I realize that he's gone silent outside. There have been a lot of normal forest noises, armadillos walking around, deer, etc., but now it was eerily silent. The next sound I hear is a tree falling down. It sounded huge, loudly crashing. It wasn't anywhere near enough for me to see from my point, but I definitely heard it. I should also say that at least this is the third time that I've been in the woods and either seen or heard a tree falling down, and once a lone tree in the middle of the sunny woods. 
It's weird enough when it starts happening in broad daylight, but this was really creepy. No other noises afterward. Eventually, the forest noises returned, but you can bet your butt that I never went to sleep. The next day, I tried to look around for it, but the property we were on bordered private land that I couldn't hike on and never did see where it might have been. I realized that nothing really happened, but I couldn't help but thinking about the old question. If a tree falls in the woods and there's no one around to hear it, does it make a sound? Yeah, it does. I live in a small mountain town, so not way out in the woods, but I could walk a quarter mile from my house and be out in sagebrush hills on BLM or state land. I've posted this story elsewhere, but I'll include it here since it still creeps me out to think about it. About 10 or so years ago, I was running one evening after dark on an unlit pedestrian bike path that goes behind my subdivision with my dog. It was late October or early November, after the time change, and fully dark, but no snow on the ground yet. I got a couple of miles from my house, with the dog running off leash, sniffing and doing her own thing. She started sniffing around one fence line, and stalled out at a good smell. Normally, she was super responsive, but she was fixated on this one spot. I walked back towards her, and let out a low whistle and said, Come on, sweetie, let's go. Immediately after I closed my mouth, something on the other side of the fence, not six inches from my right ear, mimicked the whistle exactly, and then the phrase that I'd said. I got instant chills. There was something just not right slash not human sounding about it. It got the imitation and rise and fall just right, but the voice itself was off. Literally, my first thought was someone having their parrot hanging outside by my fence but it was night in October at 5,300 feet. Like, it wasn't cold cold, but I was in tights and a couple of long sleeve shirts. No one would have their macaw out there like that. And the more I reflected on it, the more there was a mechanical element to the voice too, like a buzzy aspect. I never heard any other sounds behind that fence either. No rustling of leaves or a person talking or anything. Anyway, it scared the crap out of me. I grabbed my dog's collar and made a quick decision on which way to run, since there was no close exit from the bike path in that spot. As soon as I could cut into the neighborhood where there were a few street lights, I did. Probably set a PR on how fast I got home. I cannot imagine if I heard that somewhere in the wilderness where there was no timely exit or possibility of human help. Not sure if it's related, but a few years later I was driving on the highway very near that same spot. The bike path is sandwiched between the highway and the subdivision at about 5.30 in the morning, still completely dark out. I saw what I first thought was a person dressed in all black, wearing a hoodie with the hood up, walking on the side of the highway towards me. My first thought is, what is this idiot doing? They're going to get hit. The bike path is right there. As I got closer, I realized this figure was huge, broad-shouldered, could easily see over the cab of my truck, looked like they had no neck, which is why I thought it was someone with a hood over their head. The weirdest thing though, as I passed by them, there was not one bit of light reflecting off the figure from my headlights. I couldn't see any facial features, no eye shine, no metal zippers from clothing or reflective patches on their shoes, just a massive, all black humanoid shape striding down the highway, almost directly across from where I'd heard the voice about five years earlier. Back in 2019, as a graduation present to myself, I took a cross-country trip from Chicago all the way to the Humboldt County Redwoods, where I camped for a week. It had been a bucket list dream of mine to do ever since I was a kid, and I wanted to treat myself. Now keep in mind, I'd been in several road trips with friends, 
been to the same redwoods five years earlier on a hiking trip, so I was prepared for the trip. It was just my first solo trip. The trip went well with no accidents or issues, but I definitely got spooked on one hike. I was staying at the Elk Prairie campground, so I was in prime distance from all the trails. Still, I drove up to the Big Tree Wayside Parkside as I planned to grab dinner in Eureka after the hike. I parked the car, started my hike, and enjoyed the scenery. I'm a hobbyist photographer, so I was getting lots of pictures in and just generally enjoying myself on the trail. It was a semi-cloudy day, the kind where the sun goes in and out. I was too engrossed in the scenery to ever get that watched feeling until I hit one spot. All of a sudden, I noticed the trail seemed thinner. The brush on either side felt taller, and the forest seemed to just get darker. I got the sudden feeling that if I were to encounter a predator, I'd never see them coming. I got that you're being watched feeling. Now, I'd been inadvertently following a bachelor herd of elk the entire time. I had two encounters with the herd earlier in that hike. Once I saw a bull through the foliage, and a second time I almost accidentally walked into the herd, rounding a bend in the trail. So I was very aware that they were there, but I had no idea if they were what was watching me. I took stock of my surroundings and could hear birds chirping and normal forest sounds. So I knew that a natural predator wasn't nearby. That's when I realized I hadn't seen a human hiker in a while. The sky had also completely clouded over and I couldn't tell if I was north or south of the parking lot as I'd crossed the road onto another trail. It was just after Memorial Day weekend, so the park was fairly well populated with fellow campers. But being alone in a darkened forest like that, surrounded by high brush and the world's tallest trees, you feel isolated and vulnerable. I pulled my buck 120 and a can of bear mace and booked it out of that spot. I ran a good 10 minutes until I saw a direction sign. Turned out, I had hiked my happy butt nearly back to the campground. At that point, I just followed the road north, back to my car. A ranger notified me that the elk herd I'd been following had planted themselves around the lot. I told him I'd be careful, and not try to pet the big deer. I got some great shots with my telephoto lens, though. I don't know what was watching me but I always trust my gut feelings. I used to go to this low water crossing that was smack dab in the middle of the woods. It was a peaceful place to relax and skip a few rocks. One day, upon entering the pathway down towards the bridge, I noticed a dead baby goat laying off to the side. It struck me as odd, but I still continued down the bridge. After about five minutes of skipping rocks, I got an overwhelming feeling of being watched. I stopped for a second and kind of did a quick scan of the area. I'm not even sure how I even noticed amongst so many trees, but off in the distance there was a gray-haired lady just standing between some trees with a blank expression staring right at me. It was literally like something you would see in a movie. I immediately left, and about 30 seconds later, I'm still trying to make my way back out of the woods, and out of nowhere, a big hawk dropped a bunny on my hood. Scared the ever-loving life out of me. In recent years, hiking and camping trip on the Appalachian Trail, we set up camp, all is well, ran into a few other people during the hike, but later that night after we were all in our tents, a person walking the trail lights up our tents with a flashlight. They probably didn't see us at first, no big deal, it was a remote area, but instead of just continuing to walk the trail with the light on, they turned the light off and it was hard to tell if they continued walking or were hanging around our site. So we started talking from the tent. It wasn't scary considering all four of us are grown men and we all had firearms on us. 
it was just a little unsettling that they continued to choose to turn off the flashlight. It was pitch black. The woods were thick, and this part of the Appalachian Trail is extremely rocky and hard to not fall, even in the daytime. Thank you so much for listening to all of the stories in this video. I hope you enjoyed them. I also hope you enjoy the extra rain at the end. Get a good night's sleep, everyone. And I'll read to you in the next video. Bye-bye now.